<laughs> when you're pushing yourself to the limit, not all challenges go to plan, or even succeed. Some days are just crap. This was one of those days. So why? Why would I put myself through countless hours of suffering? Why would I voluntarily destroy my body until my toenails come off? Why would I decide to ride that emotional roller coaster and strip myself warm? Why would I want to run a hundred miles? Honestly, some days I just don't know why. So let's try to find out. So in this video, I'm going to take you on my first attempt, well, third attempt to run a hundred miles and try to explain why anybody would want to do this. Who knows what's going to happen. I'm fairly new to this self-indulging, videoing myself kind of thing, but I've been a runner for a few years now, and it's become a large part of who I am and my identity. My background is primarily as a triathlete, and I've had some success with that, and clearly by this picture, also at being a comedian. And recently, I've decided to follow my girlfriend across the globe and move to Australia. So I've tried running 100 miles a couple times before. The first time, I was immature, I didn't really know my body. The second time, I got a heat stroke and nearly passed out. So let's see, as the saying goes, can I get the third time lucky? Unsurprisingly, running 100 miles is no easy or simple feat. It requires planning, piles of kit, and thousands and thousands of calories worth of food. Precious hard-earned money needs to be funneled into enabling this beautiful form of torture. But trust me, this kit will get you through some tough times. You may form relationships with these items that even your partner may get jealous of. It's easy to think that you'll want to eat all the things that you don't let yourself have out of restraint in day-to-day -day life. But trust me, you won't be craving donuts, chocolate or ice cream deep into a running race. When exhaustion has hit and you feel nauseous and just, well, energy deprived. It's a strange paradox. Sugar isn't as attractive as you may think. Really, all you crave is nutritious, savoury and melt-in-the-mouth foods. Nothing that requires something as effortful as chewing, especially when you feel like you don't have any energy left. The ability to eat almost becomes more important than running, and it's a mighty challenge in itself. Don't underestimate it. And yeah! There we go, that's what I'm bringing. <clears throat> this is usually pulled up. I can't even wait till race day. Okay, so tomorrow is race day. Um, I wake up at, I think, 4 a.m. It's always the worst bit. There's nothing worse than having your alarm go up at 4 a.m. Thank God. All I've got to look forward to today is getting to the race and running. Probably over 24 hours. I just wanted to run through some thoughts, um, some final thoughts before the race. So I think you might see seen the video before this, but two weeks ago I ran the time 100, so I ran 100 kilometers, a um, bit of a quarter life crisis for my birthday. That was two weeks ago. I tried running last Sunday, but after three kilometers had to stop because I got that same um, the same kind of knee pain on the side of my leg. In retrospect, I think that's actually an IT band issue. So what I spent the last week doing is basically just stretching like three or four times a day, icing it, 100% focused on recovery. I'm hoping a week of serious stretching is enough to sort out the IT band issue. Otherwise, I've got a very, very long day tomorrow. So that's my main worry. Um, yeah, that is a, that could be a massive issue. I think the plan is that even if it does cause me any issues on the day, um, as long as the pain does get worse, I think it should be manageable. And I'm hoping it doesn't. And after like a one minute research, I found one post which said that uh, it won't cause any long-term damage. So that's good enough for me to, to, to work off. Um, even if I do push through it, but essentially, yeah, the, uh, my IT band is running against something on my knee. 
on every single step, which causes that kind of stiffness and that, that kind of numb pain. Um, if I remember from a physio once, if the pain's not sharp, it's not an issue. So we'll see. But yeah, that is, uh, that is definitely my main concern. Um, but I've been training for this for three or four years now. I've already tried twice before and failed. This is my time to get it done. This is my time to finally run 100 miles. I've run, I think, 147 or 42 kilometers before. So it's not that much further, 161. The elevation is very spicy. Honestly, I thought it was a lot flatter when I was booking it, but it, looking at the race pack, it's like 5,000 meters of elevation gain, which it's not massive amounts uh, over 100 miles, but it's, you're gonna feel it. Um, so that should be interesting. The main focus now is to keep calm, stay positive, focus on recovery, chill out, get an early night, prep everything you need for tomorrow, and go to bed. Nothing more, so that's the plan. Oh, and as I've just demonstrated, get the calories in. So, I promise this is my last time speaking. I will see you tomorrow morning. See you then. Good morning. Um, I must admit, there's no time when you dread what you're going to do more than when you have to wake up at 4 a.m. to do it. But we are over that now. Um, that was then followed by a kind of wave of fear about my uh, IT band and potential knee issues during the race. But we're over that now. So now it's just eating up, doing some stretching, and then um, getting to the rental and getting to the race. So I'll stop talking and I'll see you on the way. There are certain times in one's life when it's best not to. When you get up at 2 a.m. to go to the toilet, and before you know, you're overthinking and still awake at 4 a.m. But also, when you wake up at 4 a.m. and all you have to look forward to is 100 miles. So the aim is to get out of the door before you overthink it too much. like much but this was going to be my mission center for the rest of this race humble but efficient not encouraging too much resting and sitting down good morning so we are look at that we are set up i've uh, got another 30 minutes or so till the uh, start of the race feeling better getting warmer now it is actually a lot colder than i thought it'd be so i think that's gonna be one of the big struggles during the uh the long night phase because it gets dark early and gets light pretty late uh, to rise. It's going to be a long night section and it's going to be pretty cold. Um, but anyway, get to enjoy the sunrise and then get to going. And there we go. Look at that. Look at the uh, the Yu Yang Mountains behind me. Yeah, it's uh, views, landscapes and terrains like this, which is why I run trail races. Beautiful, much better than a road map.
Right, so we are just under five kilometers in. Basically the first 20 minutes was a climb, then running down that, now we've got another climb. Um, pretty, pretty good so far. Uh, just warming up, body feeling slightly achy. Um, the good news is it's beautiful. But the uh, second most important news is uh, my knee doesn't hurt just yet. I'm doing better than the run I did last weekend. But the only worry is the IT band issue gets worse when you um, bend your knees. And this elevation is steep enough that my knees are going to be bending a lot, so it might be quite irritating. Uh, I might cause some issues. But anyway, any, every kilometer which I don't have knee pain. Uh, it's a good kilometer. So, still early days, got many an hour left, but uh, yeah, enjoying it so far. <laughs> Right, got some uh, pretty, pretty shit news. Um, yeah, my left knee, deciding to have issues. Um, so we're 10k in and starting to have to walk a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's not ideal, but like I said, if I, if I need to walk this thing, I will walk it. Some people might call this pacing. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have a choice in the matter. But uh, yeah, it's mentally exhausting. It really is. Um, something like this, where you've got so many kilometers to go, you can't run. It just feels crap, but um, it's important to uh, yeah to keep trying to stay positive and to uh, just enjoy the walking. Um, this is now becoming a walking race for me, which is fine, enough idea. But you know, look at the scenery, it's beautiful. And uh, to be honest, with a fast walk, hitting about eight minutes a kilometer, it isn't super slow, it's all right. So yeah, let's just get the first lap done and get on to the second. See you soon. Okay, so that's one lap done. We're climbing back up to this peak again. And yeah, things are not too bad. Um, worst comes to worst. I've got four hours each lap um, and this was under. I believe my strength is making uh, time in the hills. So that's what I'm doing, pushing up as quickly as possible. It's about the only uh, aerobic workout I'm getting. So yeah, time to get some music going. It's time to grind up and probably back down. Yeah, I'm not sure how my knee's going to do with that, but uh, 
Hopefully it's not too painful. All right, go, let's go. Come on. We can catch him up on a walk. Oh, works your hamstrings walking, God. So the uh, good thing about uh, all this walking is it's given me uh, quite a lot of time to think. I'm uh, trying to figure out why I'm, you know, happy to put myself through this. For every step, it's a little bit painful, and it goes on for hours and hours. Um, and I think it's partly because I'm just a, I'm addicted to the accomplishment. I'm addicted to setting a challenge, a challenge which I'm not sure I'll be able to be successful and uh, struggling through, grinding through, overcoming, overcoming and, you know, successfully completing the challenge. Um, I just love the feeling. I love the sense of purpose, both in the race and uh, in day-to-day -day life. And I just love the, uh, the adventure of it all, really. And that, uh, that sense of calm and euphoria that you get when it's all finished, you can go struggle home, struggle into a bath or shower, struggle into bed. Probably sleep terribly because you feel slightly ill. Wake up the next day feeling pretty sore. Um, yeah, I love it. And that's why I'm here doing this as I nearly fall over. So I've always said that uh, the interesting thing about an uh, ultra race is that you almost live <laughs> live a week of emotions in one race. Um, and yeah, I think there are some analogies with real life really to be taken away from this. You know, as I walk here and I get people past me and it hurts my ego each and every time, um, it's important to remember that, like in a race, and like in a real life, you know, people on their own at a different pace. Sometimes you have a bit of a crap day, like me currently, um, but that's all right. Um, so that's how it is. God, what am I even saying? I guess long story short is, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about the other people. Not worrying too much about the people that passed me. We're all in our different parts of our adventure today. Um, and yeah, just focus on your own race. Focus on your own goals. Uh, and that's all that matters. But I will last. And with that, I'll stop chatting. So that's all I've been thinking about for the last hour and a half. Um, but yeah, it's time to drop out. Yeah, I don't think it's a smart idea to carry on. Uh, it's just too painful. Unfortunately, it's not the good type of pain. It's skeleto, tendinal, something rather pain. Not muscular pain which is okay. It's a beautiful sunset but yeah my day is ending here, my challenge is ending here. Not much else to say really. The worst bit is always um, 
going up to somebody and asking them to drop out because they always try to stop you. You really have to convince them that you've made your decision. Oh wow, look at that. Oh my god, it's a full one. It almost makes. Oh, it's a nearly double rainbow. Beautiful. At least the, uh, the final lap has been pretty spectacularly beautiful. It's almost worth the suffering. Uh, oh, nearly back. <sighs> Hello there. So it's the day after um, yesterday's ordeal. And yeah, I guess there's no beating around the bush. Am I disappointed with the outcome? Yes. Do I think I made the right choice in stopping? Yes. So it's a bit of a mixed feeling. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a long day. It really was. I think I was pretty naive looking back. Um, a week ago, well last Saturday when I went for a short run and had knee issues a few kilometers in, that was probably the right sign for me to push this race back. But I think the pretty stupid part of me thought a week would be long enough to stretch out and to recover. Um, obviously that was a big mistake, uh, looking back in, in retrospect. Um, yeah, don't really know what to say. It's uh, some lessons were learned, that's for sure. I now know <laughs> that uh, it's always best <laughs> if you have any issues before a race, just to push the race back. Part of me, I think, was driven by the fact that I tried to run 100 miles twice before, uh, DNF twice before as well. So part of me was really just wanting to get this done, really. Kind of, uh, yeah, this distance has kind of been my nemesis for a few years now. And it will remain my nemesis going forwards, um, which I guess is fine. Uh, yeah, I think there's clearly some lingering like phys physical issues, I would say. Um, basically since, well, really Christmas when I did that thousand miles in 10 weeks challenge and ever since then I've had various physical issues so I think I'm going to put this race behind me uh, learn a couple lessons obviously the first one is if you're injured going to race to push the race back secondly is uh, the idea of walking 100 miles may sound easy, well, it doesn't sound easy, but if you you think running 100 miles is hard, you would think walking 100 miles might be easier. Um, but no, it uses a totally different set of muscles. Um, and I found that when, yeah, during the race yesterday, obviously I was kind of praying I wouldn't have any issues, and I did. Um, it basically just got really, really tight. And as the race progressed, it just felt weaker and weaker. Um, and I started to have kind of like, thoughts or feelings that I might step, might take a step. Um, and yeah, it might be my last, my knee might twist badly and I'll just be stuck on the side of a mountain. Um, I think also the terrain of the race made it very difficult 
if you had knee issues because not only was the terrain quite rocky, um, there was a lot of steep climbing and a lot of steps, especially going up Flinders Peak at the first bit. Um, so that was kind of what I feared most. Um, and obviously my body was trying to counteract that and as I was walking, I then progressively got worse and worse shin pain. Um, can't really say it. Uh, shin pain around here, um, which just stiffened, stiffened. Today I can't actually move it really. Um, and yeah, that was just getting worse and that's what I kind of feared the most is that it would do some long-term damage, whatever that may be. Um, I need to figure out exactly what the issue is, but my plan going forwards is to basically just reset. I want to get back and I'll start from a, a physically healthy position. So I probably will spend the next month, probably won't do any running. Um, I will focus on stretching and strength and I might try some calisthenics and maybe do some swimming. But I'm going to stay away from the running. Maybe I'll do some walking actually. I'll stay away from the running for a month or so and then I want to very, very slowly, gradually build up. What I haven't had for a while um, in Australia, really, really since I moved, is a stable foundational running. I used to run pretty consistently 80 kilometers a week or so. 100 kilometers a week. I haven't done that for a while, and I think that my body is is a uh, it just needs that really to do this long distance stuff. I think the issue with doing more races is that you spend a week or two leading up to it, and a week or two leading up uh, recovering from it. So you never really have the opportunity to um, really just set a baseline, really just run outside of races. So that's what I want to work on as well and very gradually start building up my baseline up. I really just enjoy running around, um, enjoy running around Melbourne and Australia. Um, but yeah, that is, the, uh, that is the plan. Today, it's a little bit difficult, pretty bored, but uh, yeah, I can't really go anywhere at the moment, so I'm just gonna <laughs> chill here. Uh, but I think I am positive. I hope I don't lose too much fitness going forwards. Um, but I think it will be better to start from a, a solid foundation. I don't have a race for a few months now, so that gives me some time. It's winter as well here. So I don't feel like I need to be racing loads. Um, yeah, it's time for a reset. And with that, thank you for watching and see you next time. Hopefully the next video is slightly more successful. Bye now.